Good morning. I'm Gretchen, and I'm a member of the congregation at St. Mary Magdalene. I sometimes lead the service at St. Mary's on Sunday mornings, but I've never done anything quite like this. Uh, welcome to our second online worship service this morning. Although the current restrictions put in place to protect us all from the spread of coronavirus means that we can't meet together in person today, but we can still share fellowship at home and know that we are together as a church family and that the promise made to us in Romans 8, 38 still holds true. What that promise says is, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything in our creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Before we proceed with our service today, I wanted to share with you a passage from the Bible that's been on my mind in recent days, which I hadn't shared with anybody until I walked past St. Mary's yesterday and I saw the very same words in the window at church. Proof for me, if proof is needed, that God's grace and his presence is all around us and we are not alone. The passage is Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the mountains, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade by your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Father God, we rejoice that you are with us this day as we worship you together in spirit, even though we are apart in body. Protect your people and give us hope that your will shall be done and your kingdom will come, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am.
Bible reading is taken from John chapter 12, verses 12 to 19. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has got after him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Gretchen, for your welcome. And good morning again, everyone, uh, to St. Mary's Worship Online on Sunday, the 5th of April, 2020. Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. A couple of years ago, I was walking in Donegal in the north of Ireland and I was walking with some friends and one of the people I was with, uh, a very good friend, he's a very keen bird watcher and uh, when we're out walking he always, uh, as we're walking along, he he suddenly stops and he says, stop, listen, look. And so this is what he did. We'd been walking along and uh, we were walking along the sand dunes and suddenly my friend said, stop, listen, look. And he drew our attention to uh, a bird which was hovering up in the sky, uh, singing. And you, as you listened, you could hear the singing of this bird. And he told us that it was a lark. And uh, the interesting thing about the lark, uh, I'm not an expert on, on birds, but uh, I was told that uh, the lark is, is a tiny little bird. But what it does is it always flies high above the landscape and it hovers and it sings. And as it hovers and sings, it surveys the landscape, it surveys its territory. It, uh, it looks over the land uh, for signs of danger, for food. And it's an interesting idea because it has a different perspective when it rises up above the land from what it would have if it's much lower down. And it reminded me, as I thought about this, it reminded me of, of praise and worship. Because in a sense, that's what we do when we come to worship God. It's an opportunity for us to stop, to listen, and then actually lift our eyes up to God, and then to look and see what God is saying to us. To look at things uh, from a different perspective. And obviously in our lives uh, at the moment, our lives have, have changed dramatically over the last few weeks. And our perspective has in many respects changed. Perspective is about point of view. And when our point of view is changed, when our perspective is changed, then our perce perception is altered. And that's very much what was happening uh, in the, 
triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem at the time of the Passover. It was the beginning of the weekend of the Passover celebrations. And Jesus entered Jerusalem on a, on a donkey. And uh, for his disciples, this involved quite a change from what they thought he was all about. Of course, they viewed him as being the Messiah, but their view was that the Messiah would come in great glory and would uh, take his throne. But what kind of king uh, comes into a city riding on a donkey to take his throne? Jesus, as we know, was branded a criminal. And so he was a criminal coming into the city on, on a donkey to take his place on the cross. And so it's a very different kind of entry than what you would expect from a king. And it's interesting when you think about the donkey, because I have a, something that's always stayed in my mind uh, is uh, from where an experience that I had several times when I, where I come from, Northern Ireland. And in the house that um, my parents had lived in for a number of years and where we used to visit, uh, to visit an aunt regularly, there was a field next to the house and in that field there was a donkey. And the donkey was called Jacko. And my dad used to take us out to show us the donkey when we were there. And he always used to point out to us on Jacko's back that there was a cross. There was a cross on the back of, his, of, of, of Jacko the donkey. And I understand that many donkeys actually do have a cross on their back. And it's a, it's a symbol really of, of what Jesus was doing as he entered Jerusalem to take his place on the cross. He was no ordinary king. His disciples had been arguing before that point about who was the greatest. But this really shook their perception of who Jesus was as he comes into the city in such a humble manner. But Jesus, of course, for him, his path was now narrowing. As he came into the city, as he came to take his place on the cross to die, his, the road was narrowing and many people were left by the wayside. The crowds had turned out to lay the palms uh, in, in front of him. As we read in, the, in John chapter 12, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus was welcomed into Jerusalem as a king, but he was on his way to the cross. The path was narrowing. And as our archbishops were actually saying earlier this week, Holy Week this year, could be a profound experience of walking the way of the cross and experiencing the isolation that Jesus experienced as everyone fell away and he faced the cross alone. Soon there would be few people left and Jesus would be left alone to die on the cross. Apart from a few loyal uh, followers his mother, Mary Magdalene. And it's a time when we reflect on that, Jesus alone on the cross. It's also an opportunity to reflect on that song, which we're going to sing in a few moments. When the music fades and all is stripped away, I simply come. Where will we be when the music fades? Are we going to be with Jesus all the way through to the end? Are we prepared to walk with him 
on his way to the cross. Earlier this week, on the window of uh, the church, there were some words kind of scrawled in chalk. And this is what they said. They said, R.I.P. God. Well, that was really sad in a way to see that written. And of course, we could remove the words, partly because the church was shut. But it's sad because in a way it showed a wrong understanding of who God is. It showed a wrong understanding of, of what the church is. And God forgive us for what we've made the church, if that's what some people view it as, as just a building. And when the building's shut, God is dead. It also shows a wrong understanding of who we are, his people. And this morning I just want to say thanks God for who we are. In a moment, we're going to pray. But before we do that, I, I really would like us to listen to the song that I mentioned earlier. And uh, before we do that, I'd, I'd just like to say a prayer for this week, which goes like this. May we walk this week in the way of the cross and always being ready to share its weight. Declare your love for all the world. Amen. Simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things Jesus 
As we come now to pray to the living God, I just want to share with you something I heard this week uh, regarding Daniel. Daniel was in a good deal of trouble and he was praying to God and he was praying three times every day. And what was significant about his prayers was that he, on each occasion, would give thanks to God, even in a very difficult situation. In fact, I heard it said this week that gratitude is an antidote to anxiety. And many of us, of course, are fearful at this time for different reasons. Some people are fearful because of job loss. They're worried about the uncertainty that that brings, about the present and the future. How long will this go on? We want to pray that God's going to give us, especially as Christians, peace at this time. And I'd like to just read to you before we pray some words from Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you are not dead. You are present with us by your Spirit. And we want to begin our prayers now by saying thank you. Thank you for the lives you've given us. Thank you for those of us who are in good health. Thank you for the National Health Service and essential services that continue to work hard to bring this the spread of this virus under control. We pray for wisdom for all those in authority. We pray for those who are sick in hospital at this time, not only with the coronavirus, but also with other illnesses. And so in a short moment of silence, we lift those people to you. We thank you, Lord, for those we have named, those that we don't know. Lord, we pray for you to give them peace in their suffering. Give them hope for the future and bring healing to them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we're going to uh, show some photographs. Uh, a lot of people, I want to say thank you to all the people who this week have sent photographs through of them holding their palm crosses. Uh, we're going to show those photographs now uh, as, uh, of people holding up their palm crosses on this Palm Sunday. And as we uh, do that, uh, some music will play. And you're very welcome to sing along to it. It's the song, The, the Lord of the Dance.
You will have seen uh, that the last slide was, was a picture of the whole church family, a bit like a, a, a picture frame, a framed picture of the whole family, like you'd have in your house. I hope you enjoyed looking at those photographs and seeing each other again uh, uh, for the first time maybe in a while. And so now as St. Mary's family, we're going to say the prayer that Jesus taught us. So let us pray. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
We're going to finish our worship now uh, with a blessing. I do hope you've enjoyed uh, meeting with us this morning. And I'm going to use an Advent blessing, which may seem a bit strange at this time of Lent. Uh, but I, I really feel it's the right blessing to use uh, as it points to the, the coming of, of Jesus uh, in, in light, in, especially in this time of, of, of darkness. And so let us pray uh, this prayer of blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.